episode four of the Life Times with Suzuki's V-Strom 800RE. We're up to 5,000 miles on this bike now, so let's have a let's have a 5,000 mile assessment. It's a bike that I keep saying isn't very exciting, but I have really learned to respect and admire this bike. The, the love for it, 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 it's not that raw, passionate stuff, but as I say, when it comes to something that you very much admire because it's so dependable, so practical, so comfortable, and so downright versatile, then I will give this bike absolutely full marks i mean i think in the last report when we talked about how well it lapped cadwell it really summed up just how effective this bike could be i mean i rode 160 miles to the venue you know i put a load of luggage on it uh, i knew i was going far and i was staying overnight uh, for a couple of nights in fact but to do that very very efficiently and do the laps of cadwell that i did fairly well i'd say without uh, running the risk of seeming conceited I hope it was the bike the bike is just as it is on the road very relaxing easy comfortable it's a great ally on track I'm not saying go out and buy a V-Strom for your track days but if you did ride one like me I'm sure you'd be very very surprised about just how capable it is a bit more detail the engine it's one of the best motors I've tried in context look it's not a super bike it only makes about 83 horsepower but there's always good solid response there never seems to be the wrong gear on this bike it will just pull cleanly strongly and dutifully the number of times I've looked at the digital gear indicator to see a figure much higher than the rate of acceleration suggested it would be, I've lost count of. Really, really outstanding engine. Look, it weighs 220 kilos, so it's not the lightest thing around, but when you learn to boss it a bit, it's got enough agility, and, you know, it does change direction fairly well. Uh, that's been enhanced by fitting some new tyres. I've got Dunlop Road Smart 3 on that. Uh, it's not the latest spec of Dunlop in the sort of sports touring sector, but the Dunlop Road Smart 4s don't fit it. The front wheel size isn't. Uh, Road Smart 4s, we can't get the right front tyre to fit the bike in that spec of tyre. I was more than happy with the performance at Cadwell. That's the ultimate performance. I rode at Cadwell in a fashion that I could never replicate on the road without risk of dying. You just can't ride as hard on the road. So from a grip and general performance point of view, agility, stability, no problems whatsoever. The brakes were a bit wooden at Cadwell when I really wanted the ultimate from them on the road. No problems whatsoever. The comfort is a real good strong point. Riding position great seat great wind protection great the screen is very effective at keeping you sheltered the only thing that's beginning to annoy me a little bit about the bike is it's got a tall first gear quite a sharp bite on the clutch so i've stalled it on quite a few occasions just it's just not quite forgiving enough you've got to get that just right but bar that i think it's hard to knock i've got to fit a, uh, a chain oiler to it because i'm sick of getting down on my hands and knees to bloody oil the chain and i might have a bit of a twiddle with some aftermarket suspension as well but so far if i never altered it in any way i'm sure when ten thousand miles comes round. I'll remain as happy as I am now. Now, I'm at the ABR Festival, as I said I would be. Great place. But for two reasons, I'm not going to ride off-road today. A, I had far too much to drink last night, so I'm in no fit condition whatsoever to control a booking Bronco. And I haven't really got the right tyres on. I want Dunlop raids on before I do that. I'm going to do it, I promise. I've done a bit in the Peak District already, and it performed, you know, as well as a big, fat adventure bike will. I'll think of something imaginative and different to do for episode five. Promise.